administration that was built on faith and freedom and liberty and life has been replaced by an administration that has literally weakened America at home and abroad. So I came tonight to thank you for the privilege of serving. But you know, Iowa always plays an outsized role in shaping our nation's leadership. And now more than ever, we need men and women of faith in the Hawkeye State to embrace that responsibility and shape leadership that will lead our party and lead our nation back to the ideals and values that have always made America great. You know, the uh, sweetest words I ever heard in my four years as Vice President, and I heard them many times here tonight as I met many of you, or when someone reaches out across a rope line or across a banquet table or out on a street corner and simply says, I'm praying for you. I mean, really and truly. You know, you can tell when someone needs it, when they're a person of prayer. And I literally heard it every day that I was your Vice President. And so as I came here to thank you for the opportunity to serve, for the incredible progress that we made, for the challenges that we face, I want to challenge you. As you hear from some wonderful Americans tonight, I encourage you to leave here tonight, determined to do your part in the Faith and Freedom Coalition to shape that national leadership. But I also encourage you to avail yourself of that wellspring of support in the next year and a half that has seen our nation through more challenging times than we could ever imagine. And when you pray for America, pray with confidence, remembering that if his people, who are called by his name, will humble themselves and pray and turn, he'll hear from heaven and he'll heal this land, this one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So let's work and let's pray and let's win back America, Iowa. Thank you very much and God bless you. If you want to find strong faith, let me introduce you to my wife, Karen, yeah. <laughs> who, by the way, was the best second lady the United States of America has ever had. <laughs> I will tell you from that, that time in my freshman year in college, 1978, when I attended a Christian music festival at a university, much in the news lately, called Asbury University in Wilmore, Kentucky. I was sitting on a hillside. Some friends from a Christian fellowship group, Jeff, had invited me to, to go and attend a, a contemporary Christian music festival. And it was there as I, I heard the words for the first time in my life. That God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever might believe in him might not perish but have everlasting life. And I stood up and I walked down on that rainy night, I found a young pastor, and I prayed to receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I must tell you, I know it changed my life forever. That it seen me through uh, not only years in public service, but uh, years of great challenges in our family. I, I will tell you, that day in, in 1988, during my first campaign for Congress, when I got the phone call to come to the hospital, that my father had fallen ill in Columbus, Indiana. That was a time of great testament to my faith. My dad was a combat veteran in the Korean War, still the best man I've ever known. And he left us too soon. But as I wrote in my autobiography, it was a, it was a testing time for my faith, a time when I had to be honest with God about the disappointments that I felt. We went through some losing campaigns early on, and, uh, some people in the room here know what it's like to lose a campaign. I've had a little bit of experience with that. My first two runs for Congress I lost. It would take me 10 more years before I'd be elected to Congress. But all through those years, I can tell you that for Karen and me, it was our faith that sustained us. All the way up to the end of the administration, I will tell you, it was um, when people thank me about the service we rendered to the country. I always say, by God's grace. And... Uh, God's grace has seen me through thus far, and men and women of the Faith and Freedom Coalition, God's grace will see America all the way back. I believe it. Will.
Vice President, again, it's always an honor to have you in our Hawkeye State. Thank you, Jeff. I wish you would have been a little more enthusiastic in your speech. <laughs> when you see a thousand people out there, it kind of gets you just <laughs> this Give President. him a round of applause. I thought that was pretty amazing. What a great show. And Iowa just swept this last year. It's all about great grassroots. It That's is. what it's all about. Incredible. Mr. Vice President, I'm obviously this group, and I would argue all Iowans, regardless of their political affiliation, are worried about the erosion of our religious liberties. We're worried about the woke left. What do our leaders need to do now? Vote Republican. <laughs> I'm good with that. Well, look, you put your finger on it, whether it be this uh, radical gender ideology that's even taken hold in schools here in Iowa, the Lindmar Community Schools, our foundation got involved in that fight. And people, people talk about this, this radical gender ideology that's being pressed by the left, but they don't, they don't talk about it often as you just did, Jeff, and that is it's about religious freedom. I mean, in the Lindmar Community Schools here in Iowa, students can obtain a gender transition plan from the school without their parents' permission. This is at the same school where you need a written permission slip to get an aspirin. I mean, it just, that's not bad policy, that's crazy. I'm talking as a father and as a grandfather. But just as bad in that school's policy is that students can be penalized if they don't use the proper pronoun at the school. And also students can be penalized if they express things that are, seem to be intolerant. So you could literally say that you believe in your heart of hearts that male and female, you created them. And you could be penalized in public school in this state for doing so. You know, men and women, I, I have to tell you, it's about common sense, it's about defending women's sports, but make no mistake about it. The battle against radical gender ideology is a battle for religious freedom. And it's a battle we must fight. points to us that we as Iowans should consider to be persuaded that we should be sending aid to Ukraine? It was a year ago, Karen and I were traveling with a Christian ministry called Samaritan's Purse. We were in Poland along the Ukrainian border when, when the ministry leaders informed us that we'd be able to travel into Ukraine one month after the Russian invasion. Karen and I traveled to a refugee center just about 10 miles across the border. We saw things I never thought I'd see in Europe, other than in black and white films. I mean, imagine a scene, a crowd almost like this, surging in one direction, but the entire crowd was women of every age, and children of every age in tow, with people carrying virtually everything they could carry of their, their possessions on their back, fleeing the violence of the unconscionable and unprovoked Russian invasion. Now, I believe America is the leader of the free world, and we're the arsenal of democracy. And I believe that what Ronald Reagan said in 1985 is still true today. It got called the Reagan Doctrine. It's the idea that if uh, President Reagan said in the State of the Union address, any country that's willing to fight the communists in their country, we'll give them a means to fight them there so we don't have to fight them here. It was part and parcel of the policies that resulted in the unraveling of the Soviet Union. And I believe today it is absolutely essential that America be the leader of the free world and that the American people provide the courageous military in Ukraine the resources they need to repel the Russian invasion and restore their sovereignty. I believe it's in our interest, but it's in the interest of freedom. I've met Vladimir Putin. I've told him things he didn't want to hear. I've judged the man. Let me tell all my friends here in Iowa, anybody that thinks that Vladimir Putin will stop at, at Ukraine if he overtakes that country, has what we say out in Indiana, another thing coming. Let me also tell you, 
the way that America and the West respond to Russian aggression is also going to inform the communist Chinese. They're watching, and I truly do believe the way we can achieve peace in Europe and in the wider world is by demonstrating American strength. And anyone who tells you that we can't be the leader of the free world and secure our border and revive our economy here at home has a small view of the greatest nation on earth. We can do it. Mr. Vice President, our time is through, but thank you so very, very much for gracing us with your presence. Great honor to be here. Thank you all again, Faith and Freedom Coalition. Let's go to work, let's pray. Iowa, we need your leadership to turn America around. Thank you all, and God bless you.